Whether you prefer to unwind the evening with a good book, play games on your phone, or want to have some cozy time with your partner, the right bedside lighting can make a lot of difference. In this project, I'm going to make a touchless multipurpose bedside lamp which will also include a digital clock, two power ports and a USB charger. This video is sponsored by PCBWay. PCBWay specializes in manufacturing of very high quality, low volume, colored PCBs at a very budgetary price. In addition to standard PCBs, you can order advanced PCBs, aluminum PCBs, rigid flex PCBs. They also provide PCB assembly and other related services which can meet your need at the greatest extent. Let's start the project by sanding a pallet plank to give it a nice and smooth texture. Then let's drill three holes for the top and the two sides of the night lamp. After drilling the holes, let's extract the sides from the plank using a chop saw or a hand saw. My pallet plank is 9.5 cm wide and the lamp will be square in shape. So rest of the measurements are all based on that. Once all the sides were ready, it was time for me to join them all together. First of all, I'm getting the two sides ready by gluing the power sockets to the hole. Next, I drilled two more holes for the IR sensor. If you want to know more about IR sensors, please check out my tutorial number 21, DIY IR module. The link is in the description below. Next, one by one using hot glue, I'm joining the two sides to the top of the lamp. At first, I thought of using nails to join the sides, but soon I realized that by all means, it was a very bad idea. Before gluing the second side, I connected the two power ports together using a copper wire. Alright, now let's look at the electronics bit. For the electronics bit we need, one IR sensor, five colored LEDs, five 220 ohm resistors, one 10 microfarad capacitor, five NPN transistors, and a 4017 IC. 4017 is a decade counter, it can count from 0 to 10. When a clock signal is received on pin number 14, the output turns to high one by one in sequence. The signal from the IR sensor clocks the 4017 decade counter. Whenever a pulse is received at the clock input of the IC, the counter increments the count and activates the corresponding output pin. So the sixth output from pin number 5 will be given to the reset pin, pin number 15. Sending a high signal to pin number 15 will reset the counter and it will skip counting the rest of the numbers and will start from the beginning. A capacitor is used to filter out too frequent detection of object by the IR sensor. To add a cluster of LEDs to the circuit, we just need to feed the output from the IC to a transistor and the cluster can then be connected to the transistor, exactly similar to this setup. Once I had my design ready, I just had to upload the Gerber file to the PCBWay's website and then select the type, color and any other customization that I want and then just send it for fabrication. For my project, I chose the black color. PCBWay ships from China to most of the countries of the world within 3 to 7 business days. Talking about the quality, it's absolutely mind blowing. So now let's start putting the components together. Let's solder the IC base followed by the 5 NPN transistors. Then let's solder the 220 ohm resistor and the 10 microfarad capacitor to the board. I also added few pin headers to the board, 3 for the IR sensor and 2 for the 5 volt power supply. The transistors are connected to this ribbon of wire which then connects to the cluster of LEDs that will slide under the top section. Before putting the circuit into production, let's do a quick test. Bang, nailed it. For the front bit, I'm using a 4-bit DIY electronic digital clock which I bought from AliExpress for just $2.40. If you want to know more about this clock, please check out my tutorial number 12, DIY wooden clock. The link is in the description below. I moved the two push button switches from the board to the front panel of the lamp. My initial plan was to cover the entire setup with a timber veneer sheet. However, I could not find one that was thin enough to not completely hide the 7-segment display. So, I ended up putting a black plastic film over the 7 segment display. The back bit will host the USB port and will also have a hole for the AC power cord. 
Let's have a look at this USB port. When I'm holding a USB port upside down, the leftmost pin is the negative pin and the rightmost pin is the positive pin. The middle two are the data pins which I'm not going to use in this project. I used a rubber grommet to safeguard the power cord's hole. To power the electronics bit, I'm using a USB charger. I glued the USB charger to the back bit of the lamp. I soldered the power supply cable to the USB charger and then hot glued it to protect it from touching other electrical and electronic components. Then I glued the back and the front plate of the lamp to the wooden frame. I soldered all electronic components to the USB charger. The bottom bit will hold the AC power cables. Since I don't want the AC cables to float around and cause short circuits inside the lamp, I screwed them to the base of the lamp. I painted the lamp a little bit to give it a modern look. Next I super glued the black plastic flame and painted the edges to match the whole setup. To finalize the setup I added a bit of hot glue to the bottom of the lamp. These glue drops will stop the lamp from scratching my bedside tabletop. Covid has taught us many things. It has changed our lives. This project was an attempt to make things touchless. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Thanks again for watching this video. I hope it helps you. If you want to support me, you can subscribe to my channel and watch my other videos. Thanks. See you again in my next video. Bye now.